Okay, guys, welcome to my vlog number 13. Uh, I'm going to get right to it, so I'm going to give you a rundown. Here's the outline. I'm going to talk about Hamvention, the YouTuber meetup at Hamvention. I'm going to show you a QSL card. I'm going to talk about the AT1 antenna. I'm looking at small antenna solutions for travel. Um, I'm going to show you my uh, talk about the telescoping poles and a new project I'm doing. Real quick, I'm going to talk a little bit about camping and survival and my interest. And then at the very end, I'm going to talk about moving to Austin, my idea about that, whether I'm really going to do it or not. So that's the outline in order of importance that I think you might be interested in. You can check out at any time. All right, so let's get started right away. Hamvention. Okay, so we're at 24 days, 10 hours. It's coming really fast. Uh, I've got my events pretty much planned out. I'm going to the, the homebrew thing Friday night probably, and then we're going to have our meetup on Saturday night at 6 o'clock at the Warped Wing Brewery. And we talked about that last week, but here it is right here, Warped Wing Brewery. All right, so there's a Facebook page, and I'll put a link in the description, but please go here and put that you're going. We have 14 going and 21 interested. We, we don't know. But here, take a look at this. Here's who we know is going. Uh, there's Josh Hoshnasi. He's a YouTuber. Jason Ham Radio 2.0. N9YO, that's me. K8MRD is going. Tom W8TAM. Jason K8TSG. And Bargain Basement Ham Radio. Ron C., my good friend. All right, so those, that's who's going so far. Those are the YouTubers. So anybody that wants to go, Saturday night show up at the Warp Ring Brewery. I want to say, if you get there and you are there before us, please get a table. It's first come, first serve. We've been talking with the owner. They're they're welcome to they we are welcome to come, but they do not reserve anything. So please go in the back against the wall and just start grabbing some tables for us. If you get there before we do, start getting there at five or six or seven. If you plan on going, all right. So that's that. Okay, so. I've been having this problem in that every time I go out, I think, man, it's going to be really hard because the way I do it, I throw an antenna up into a tree and it's very effective. It's really good. And I always wanted to do the extra mile and it works really well. But what about those times where you don't have time or you just don't want to do that? And so I've seen other people do reviews on this. This is the, it's a $99 Elecraft AX1. And at first glance, I thought, I'm going to try this, right? I'm going to get this antenna. And just think about it. All you need is a box. You pull it out. You put your, you plug your antenna in, and you bring it up, and you're done, right? That's cool. However, you know it's not going to work very well, right? You know it's going to be a struggle. I struggle with the wire, long wire, 40-foot wire, and doing QRP in this environment as it is, let alone shrinking that down into a little screwdriver antenna, right? However, this little guy looks really cool. So what I was thinking what I'm going to do is instead of this, I'm just going to do a, 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 the next level up, and it's going to be pretty much free. All right, so what I'm doing, my project, is you can buy these fairly cheap. I think they're like 20 bucks. Amazon and, and also eBay, you can get them. But they're these little telescoping poles, and they've got Chinese writing on them. Of course, they're Chinese. And don't be fooled, because some of them say like 30 20 they say something like 25 meters or something but they're they're not they're all a lot shorter than you think anyway you they just telescope out you know you know what these things are right you you bring them up and you twist them and you bring them up and you twist them all right the downsides with these things now the obvious downside with these things are that once you get it out in the field how are you going to keep it upright because if you lean it against something it will slide over it that's kind of the big problem so here's what i'm going to do I'm going to do, throw, do a random wire. I'm going to keep it as simple as possible. Put this on the ground when I travel. Throw this up, run a wire up, and then and run a wire on the ground, okay? And here's what it's starting to look like. Very, very crude. But I have, I have a basic camera light. This is for photography and stuff. Very cheap. You can get these on Amazon for like 20, 15 bucks or something. It's for a light. But it's just my support for my pole. And then I'm going to raise this up. I hope you can see it. And I've, I taped on a little carabiner here. I'm going to attach my antenna, bring it up, start operating, and, and take it straight back down that way. And this collapse, collapses too, by the way. Yeah, it's a little awkward, but carrying this, carrying this is not too bad. And the alternative, though, is how do you get this telescoping pole, how do you get that pole to stand, stand upright, okay? So that's my plan. It's crude, 
but that's going to be my plan, and I'll do some videos with that. I'm thinking when I'm traveling, I'm in a hotel. I don't want to go mess with trees. I'm just going to take this, stick it in the ground, or, or bind it somehow, throw it up, antenna, and that will keep me from having to buy this, this little guy right here. I think this would be good. I'd like to have it, but I don't think it's going to be that effective anyway. And $100, I don't know. I'm just going to save the money. Anyway, that's where we are with that. All right, QSL card. All right, today's QSL card comes from West Bloomfield, Michigan, WA8IWX. Not a bad card at all. Not a bad card. Much better than anything I've ever done. Okay, this is Alan Olander. Thank you, Alan, for sending me this. It actually got these. I keep all of them, of course, but it's been quite a while. Uh, he was using a 10 tech output 100 watts hustler on a balcony. Tom, thanks for the QSO. Uh, using mobile antenna on the balcony. Hope to meet you again. This was on 14th of February 16, 2016. It's been quite a while, man. Thanks for the card. Just wanted to share that. Nice little card. All right. Now we're going to move on to the camping and survival stuff that I'm interested in. All right, here we go. So have you ever watched that show, Dual Survivor? Survival? They've had a number of characters on the on the show for a while. They switch them on. And I don't think they, it's even on the air anymore. But, you know, I used to get into that. I really like that show. I, I know it's kind of staged. I know that. But I still enjoy it, right? And Cody Lundin, he's kind of the hippie guy. Remember this guy? He wrote this book. I bought this a long time ago. It's pretty darn good. This is, his style of writing is kind of like humorous, but he's very, very, you need to survive. And survival sucks. Like, he talks, he talks in this book about, like, trapping rats and things. Like, if, if all hell breaks loose, that's what the book is called, if all hell breaks loose. This is, like, very practical book for people like, like, just suburbanites and stuff that know nothing about survival. Like, how to keep... Like, one of the things is water purification. He says, always keep some bleach on hand. That's the easiest way to purify water. And he tells you how much you need. But if you could take any water and put a tiny bit of, of Clorox bleach, which is super cheap, and it will purify the water, right? If you had to, you could always purify water. So anyway, this book's pretty good. It's very, like I said, it's pretty basic. It's for the average person that, it's for the average person that doesn't know anything about survival. All right, well, that leads me to water purification. Okay, so I'm a big believer in having just some basic things around the house for survival. And just in case something crazy happens and there's chaos and the power grid goes down, you have something. I have some dry storage, storage foods that's, you know, those things last, those things last like 25, 30 years, those freeze-dried foods. I bought a few packages, not a ton. I'm not crazy or anything, but here's something I picked up, and you probably already know about this, but it's a life straw. And what it does is it filters the hell out of the water down to something like 0.1 microns or something but basically I got this for camping too um, for hiking like if I ever do a long hike so basically what you do is you just put this in the water and you suck on it and it filters anything pretty much anything out of the water um, is it perfect no should you probably uh, put iodine or something in the water yes but anyway life straw pick one of these up pretty cheap actually I was at Bass Pro Shop and I almost bought it but then I looked it up on Amazon it was like literally like nine dollars cheaper so I'm like, screw that. So I just bought it on Amazon. All right, so that leads me into the final thing before my move stuff. And that is, this is a device I got several years ago, and I got it specifically for hiking. You can see I've, I've used it quite a bit. What this is, it's a bladder. This is a bladder, and it has a hose. And in between the hose, it has a directional water filter and you can see the little arrow on there the way the water is supposed to come so it comes up here you put this in your bag and you suck on it and it filters the water through here and i will tell you i actually did use this so what i did about five years ago i did this 13 mile hike and i had literally had 30 pounds on my back and it was on the ozark trail so what i did was what you do is you hike through the trail and there's like this mini resort there and i camped out there and then the next morning, I rented a canoe, and then I went all the way back. But what I didn't know was the water levels were super low, so I ended up having to drag the canoe. Seriously, I had to get out of the, I had to get out of the freaking canoe every few feet 
and drag it because it was there wasn't enough water. So I had to drag it and then get back in it and then like and I had to get out and drag it. It sucked. Thirteen miles, man. Thirteen each way. Anyway, I did use this. I filled it up. You fill it up with water in the in the little creek or whatever. You put this on top. You suck through this. It filters it. I drank tons and tons of, of creek water or uh, whatever's whatever that creek is or river and it was great so anyway that's some camping stuff some survival stuff okay finally i told you guys i was thinking about moving to austin or somewhere warmer and i started doing some research and some research and some research on austin our neighbors across the street are literally from austin how weird is that and i started to add it up i started to look at reviews and it just didn't add up there were way too many negatives. And the number one bad thing about Austin is that apparently the traffic has gotten horrendous. So lots of IT companies have moved there and it's very happening, but the infrastructure has not kept up. And so there's tons of traffic. That's not the only problem. If you go and Google the, the reviews on Austin, there's other problems. The infrastructure there, the taxes are going skyrocket. They're skyrocketing there. There's a lot of people there that love taxes. So this, the, the property taxes are going up, up, up. There's a lot of homeless people there, like lots of them. They have a serious problem there. And with the humidity and everything, it just it was just bad thing after bad thing after bad thing. So, well, let me, let me show you. So take a look at a map of Austin. You can kind of see what it really is. It's a, just a highway straight through it. And it looks like they just kind of built, they didn't really build an infrastructure around it. And so one of the cities that we're looking at, and I'm pretty familiar with it because I wrote because I was raised in Oklahoma and that is Oklahoma City I'm actually going to be going here in a few weeks I'm going to take my radio and I'm going to do some videos maybe even some live streaming but notice how Oklahoma City has highways that surround it you can go all the way around and I've been there I know Oklahoma City so we're going to take a close look at it the cost of living there is is a lot lower it says in online it says it's 17 percent cheaper than where I live right now in St. Charles, Missouri. And the houses, when you look at housing, they're like 20, 30, 40,000 less than what I pay for this house. So we're look, taking a good look at moving there. It's, it's not too far south. It's not too hot. It's not too cold. It's kind of the best of both worlds. Plus my mom, my mom lives up here. My mom lives here in Miami, Oklahoma. That's where I grew up. And so getting back and forth for her, she could actually come and see us a lot better. Because right now it's five hours, and from here it's three hours. Anyway, that's it for my vlog. Hope you stayed with me. If you did, let me know what you think. Tell me what you liked, what you don't like. Tell me if I ramble. Tell me if I don't do enough detail. This is just some stuff I throw together every week. All right, I'm rambling now. Later, man.